Hunter Myers wanted a video that includes recruiter experiences with you, fans, or your friends, maybe lies that a recruiter told you, or if they were great. All right, Hunter. Well, unfortunately for you guys, my recruiter was absolutely awesome. And so I don't really have any bad experiences or crazy stories that I can tell you guys because my recruiter was seriously on point. I was started talking to her. She was a staff sergeant. She made tech sergeant. She put on tech sergeant right before I got home on wrap, like when I took leave between tech school and my first duty station. And then last year or the year before, she made master. And she's only been in for like 10 or 12 years. So she's like fast tracking it. She's, she's a good airman. She was always on top. Like she had so many awards from being a recruiter and like before, like she's always been that like on point airman. So she was actually a really, really, really good recruiter. And I kind of wished I would have had like a worse recruiter because then I would make for stories now, but that's not the case. But there was one thing I do remember that she lied to me about and that uh, her boss lied to me about. And it's not even a big deal, but it's about my job. Because recruiters honestly don't know a lot about jobs in the Air Force. And the reason they don't is because, just like me, I joined the Air Force and for four years I've done aircraft structural maintenance. Now they could say tomorrow, hey, you know what? We're picking you up for a recruiting spot. You're moving to such and such location and you're gonna be a recruiter. So then here I am going to be a recruiter. And then I have people like you coming to my office asking me about aerospace, medical, engineer, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, well, is that even a career? I don't know what you're talking about. Um, and then you guys are like, yo, this recruiter sucks. He doesn't know anything. Yeah, that, that really is the case, is that the recruiter isn't going to know 99% of the jobs in the Air Force. Because just like me, I know my job and I know very little about other maintenance jobs. If you ask me anything about dental or medical or a desk job, I'm gonna tell you I do not know a thing. I know they sit in a chair and they type on a computer. That's what a desk job does. So as a recruiter, they're not going to know most jobs in the Air Force. So when you go to them and you're looking for information, your best bet is to go on airforce.com or to go online and use Google or YouTube and research about that career field. And if there's not much information and your recruiter doesn't know, then you're kind of out of luck as far as information goes for that because your recruiter is gonna know the whole process about joining the Air Force, but when it comes to actual jobs and you being like, oh, I want this job or I want this, they're probably gonna be like, cool, like, they know what the brief summary on airforce.com says if they look it up. But overall, they probably don't know a single thing about that career field that you want unless it's the career field that they have already done. So back to what I was saying about my recruiter line and her boss line is that when I was getting my job, aircraft structural maintenance, her boss was like, her boss was in the office one day and we were talking about it. And he was like, dude, you're so lucky. Like, that's an awesome job. It'll be totally cool. He's like, I used to know dudes that had that job and they would pull their motorcycles in the shop and they would work on their motorcycles at work. And like people will pull their cars in and they paint their cars and they'll do all this stuff. So I was told all this super cool stuff. Like when you're slow, like you just sit here and build stuff for yourself. Lo and behold, in the Air Force, that's actually illegal and you'll go to jail for that. So don't do that. It's called fraud, waste, and abuse. And apparently back in the day, it used to not really be a thing or when it was a thing, nobody really monitored it really well. So people used to do stuff like that way back in the day, but it's no longer way back in the day. So I had this expectation and then when I joined, I was like, holy crap, like everything is way more anal than I thought it would be. Like they made it sound like it was gonna be super chill and cool and it's not super chill and it's not super cool. And it's literally like work, work, work and like every second of every day, you're probably doing something wrong and you might get in trouble. And so I'm like, yo, you guys lied to me. But then going back, it was like, yo, you didn't even know what you were talking about. You just kind of heard hearsay here and there over the years. And that was really the only experience they had from it is hearing stuff from other people that heard stuff from other people that got related to them because neither of them were in maintenance. So there was almost no way of them knowing what my job is actually gonna do. And my job does different things at different bases. Like here, 
I do advanced composite work. So I do fiberglass repairs here more than almost anything. At Kadena, we didn't do fiberglass almost ever. Fiberglass was very, very rare. Here, it's like what we do most of the time. So uh, knowing what you're gonna do or your recruiter knowing what you're gonna do is pretty hard because that can even vary on base to base. So like someone could tell me, yeah, and you're gonna do this. And that might be right for one of our bases, but 99 other bases aren't gonna do that one thing. And so that's the hard thing about being a recruiter and with my recruiter, that was like the only thing that I can remember that I was really like, oh, you messed up. But now that I've been in for four years, I see exactly where they're coming from. There's no way they're gonna know. But my recruiter was super awesome. We used to do uh, weekly PT, so we would show up to one of the parks in Cedar Rapids, Iowa, and we would do PT for like an hour, hour and a half. She was uh, a cyclist instructor at the MAC, so like on her off time, like she would recruit, and then after recruiting, she would go teach classes. She had a second job. And she was really, really athletic and really fit. And like she was literally like the ideal airman, like she was crazy smart and she was crazy fit. So once a week we did these PT sessions and she actually did a really good job of leading them. But a lot of times she would let like me or someone else that was in our depth that was really fit actually lead the PT sessions. So a lot of PT sessions, since I was in depth for 11 months, I got to lead a lot of those weekly PT sessions and then other people got to lead them as well. But she was really good about meeting up with us and having us do PT once a week and then like once a month we had depth meetings. She was really good about doing that stuff and she would bring people in and we could ask questions and she was just a really awesome recruiter and she she worked really, really hard and she also didn't ever go to school. She didn't go to schools to recruit people because she had so many people trying to join that it was pointless for her to leave the office to go to schools to try to recruit people because she had so many people joining that she would turn down like 10 people a day just because she was already at her numbers for how many people she could put in, which was absolutely crazy because when I joined, this is another story, I was trying to get a hold of this recruiter for the longest time. I would go to her office and I always seemed to like miss her, like she would be out at lunch or doing something. And so eventually I like called the voicemail, left voicemails, I sent her an email, she wouldn't respond back. So I finally left a sticky note on her door and I was like, hey, my name is Kyle Gott. Here's my phone number. I want to join. I'm 21 years old. She called me back and was like, hey, uh, I just got your sticky note. And she's like, when can you come in for to pick up a packet? So like after like two months of me like going back and forth between her office, finally got a hold of her. And it's because I left a freaking sticky note on her door. I was that desperate to join at the time. And then we talked for like another two months. I did like the whole fill out paperwork stuff and she like talked to me and we figured everything out. And then I went to MEPS. And then from there, um, I waited 11 months to get my job. And like every month she's like, I'm hoping you get a job, I'm hoping you get a job. I don't know how the job selection stuff goes, honestly. I don't know if they send out a list and your recruiters like grab one and then gives it to you. Or if the list comes out from like MEPS and they're like, we assigned this person this job. So that's, if you guys know how that works, comment down below. Um, but it took her forever to get me a job. So I don't know what she was doing. Maybe she was just trying to get me one of my jobs on my list, which was like not a lot because I only qualified for like 20 some jobs because I'm color deficient. So I think she was trying to hold out for one of my top picks, which I think aircraft structure mean. Once I found out I was color deficient, my top 10 picks were gone. Like finito, could not do them. And I was heartbroken. I cried. I was upset. And then I was like, well, I still want to join. So let me write down these seven jobs I don't want to do, but I want to serve the Air Force. And aircraft structural maintenance happened to be my number two job that I didn't really want to do, but of everything that I qualified for, it was what I wanted to do most at the time, second most at the time. And so I think she was just holding out to get me that job for a really long time or get me one of my top picks. She was a super awesome recruiter and I didn't, I didn't really have any problems. Like a lot of the problems that people comment about or talk about on my videos, I've never really had those issues. I, I had a really good experience, other than the fact that it took forever for me to join. I know it's lame that I had a good experience with my recruiter, but shout out to you, my recruiter. I'm not gonna say her name, because uh, I wanna keep that kind of confidential. I don't, I don't really know if I'm allowed to or not, or if it would be a big deal or not, but um, if you see this, you know who you are. I'm super glad you were my recruiter because I've heard some pretty bad stories about recruiters and you are a good recruiter, so. I hope you guys enjoyed this this video. I know, like I said, it was lame because there was no like cool, crazy, like, wow, that was stupid, that sucks kind of story with my recruiter, but uh, it is what it is and I'm kind of glad that it went that way for myself at least and I, I hope that you guys have a similar experience with an awesome recruiter 
And uh, if not, I'm sorry. So I, if I could change things, I would, but I can only do so much and changing the Air Force is not exactly something I'm gonna be able to do because I have tried. I've tried and I've tried and it's just not working. But if I can change it from the bottom up, because I definitely cannot change it from the top down. So that's why I kind of influence you guys, help you guys, talk to you guys, because if we can make the Air Force better, it definitely needs it. So uh, yeah, as always, be sure to give this video a thumbs up and click subscribe, and I'll see you guys in tomorrow's video. Peace out.